Hey, thanks so much for being a part of our study in Deuteronomy. We're, I told Rudy earlier, we're right in his sweet spot of understanding. So we talked yesterday about Passover, and we could spend a week on Passover, and uh, we're not, but we could have. And we're now going to talk about the Festival of Weeks, so let me, let me read about that. Uh, this is Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 9. You shall count seven weeks, beginning the count of the seven weeks from the time the sickle is first put into the standing grain. Then you shall keep the festival of weeks to the Lord your God, contributing a free will offering in proportion to the blessing that you've received from the Lord your God. Rejoice before the Lord your God, you and your sons and your daughters, your male and female slaves, the Levites uh, resident in the town, as well as the strangers, the orphans, and the widows who are among you, at the place that the Lord your God will choose as a dwelling for his name. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt, and diligently observe these statutes. You talk to us a little bit, Rudy. Well, <clears throat> Festival of Weeks basically says you shall count seven weeks, begin to count the seven weeks from the time that the sickle is first put in the standing grain. Well, if you were to think about <clears throat> Passover and the ending of Passover and the ending of Unleavened Bread, the next day would be, uh, in the original, was Sunday. And because it wasn't, it was, the, it was the day after the unleavened bread, you actually could go back to work. So that's the day that you were to count uh, to have seven full weeks involved. Uh, that's the day after the children of Israel crossed the Red Sea. It is the day after Jesus raised from the dead. And when you count what you were to take, if you were to look at a calendar and look at seven weeks starting with Sunday, it would end on Sunday, right. always. Which coincides to the children of Israel getting the Ten Commandments at Mount Sinai. 50 days after the crossing of the Red Sea, they got the Ten Commandments. 50 days after Jesus' resurrection, we get the Holy Spirit. The reason there were so many Jews in Jerusalem on that day was because it's one of the commanded pilgrimage festivals, and all the males were supposed to be there, and they were commemorating the giving of the Ten Commandments. Right. Now, Rudy and I say this a lot to each other. You can't make this stuff up. You can't. <laughs> This is, this is God's gift to us to show us his pattern. You, you mentioned uh, earlier that uh, some of these numbers are like God's code. Talk about this. Well, we were... I, I believe God's numbers are languages, is a language. And right. uh, I believe that the seven plus one is the base code of the universe. Right. The seven plus one I have, I, I name the, cre the recreation story. We think about the creation story all the time because it's six plus one, but ultimately our hope is based upon being recreated in his image uh, that we can spend eternity with him. Right, correct. Uh, so the, that year, uh, this 50, this 50 day from the crossing of the Red Sea to the giving of the Ten Commandments and Jesus' resurrection and the giving of the Holy Spirit is, is, the, is the main idea of what the year of Jubilee is an echo of. Okay, expand on that. Jubilee is, is 50 years. 50 years. And at, at the end of those 50 years, people who've been in debt are released from, from those debts. Right. Really, it, it's more about you get back your inheritance. Okay. And let, let me just mention also, when Jesus preached about the favorable year of the Lord, this, was, that's the 
That's the year of Jubilee. That's the year of Jubilee. So this all ties together. Now, keep talking. I'm just keeping well, interrupting. Well, interestingly, you know, if you were to look, look, at a, look at the numbers and the equation of 50, it's easily 7 times 7 plus 1. Right. So the 7 plus 1 is there of the recreation story. Right. And really, this whole thing, this whole existence, Time was created so that we would understand that there was a creator of the universe. He has been moving this through time until the appointed time of it to end. And that we would be eventually like Adam and Eve in, the, in, in a place like the garden, only better. Yeah. Actually, it is, I think it is the garden. We're are what better. What's better, yeah. And just let me close this up with some thoughts here. Uh, Rudy and I, we could, we could title our blog, blog uh, you know, Two Old Guys Talking About the Bible. Uh, and, and as we measure our, our years, we know that, that we have less time in front of us than we have behind us. Correct. And so you start thinking about what's it like on the other side, what's it like to to uh, you know to head off into eternity? Without saying, it goes without saying, eternity is a whole lot longer than the time we spend on Earth, and we can be full of praise to God for what He has given to us to give us the idea that we're going to live beyond the grave. And the next step in our lives is just going to be the best that we could ever imagine. Praise God for that. The other piece is, and, and we read it all throughout Deuteronomy and also other places, and that is, let's live in gratitude and love and obedience to the Lord. Uh, you know, you have to wonder, if God is all-knowing, why didn't he just make us this way in the and the thing is, he didn't. Right. Yet, he left us a roadmap to see possibly what we we're supposed to be doing. Correct. And my understanding of the possibility is, is how I'm able to understand what the meaning of life is. The philosophers and the great thinkers of the world have been trying to solve this, solve the answer to this question from the beginning of time. Yeah. I believe Christianity is the only ideology that has the answer. That Jesus is the only one worthy to reign. Yes. And that's what this life is about. Not only to come to that conclusion, but to come to the, to the conclusion that he left these breadcrumbs throughout this last 3,500 years making, you can't make this up. Right. It, uh, the numbering system can't be made up. Uh, right. I, you know, there isn't really enough time in this video to right. really explain all that, but I've worked on this for 30 years and uh, it just gets more and more tied together with every new detail the Lord reveals. Yeah. With that, we're going to end and we have now completed seven lessons. Rudy, thank you for taking your day off to be here with me. It's always fun. And we hope that this has been helpful to you. Hope so. Yeah. If our volume level isn't high enough, let me know. We'll have to make some adjustments there. But thank you so much, and God bless you lots. We'll see you.